All right, Patrick. So we spent some time on yesterday's show just uh, trying to come up with, you know, what's the pecking order or the Mount Rushmore of great Minnesota Timberwolves <laughs> presidents or GMs and coach combinations? And uh, this may be it, actually. Before before Tim Connolly and Chris Finch even, uh, you know, band together for one game, this, this might be it. All due respect to Flip Saunders, but it's not a very uh, long list. Well, Kevin and Flip, you know, first – however many years uh, since, for a couple of years yeah yeah i mean they they made the playoff in in retrospect making the playoffs eight consecutive years was uh was pretty good i mean they were smart enough to i and you know who uh god love kevin McHale and then god love flip i'd say kevin garnett had a hell of a lot more to do with that than being right in that one draft when you picked the high school kid fifth had a lot more to do with uh, that the eight year run in the playoffs than than anything else. That's for sure. But uh, uh, you know, it is amazing when you look back through the history of this franchise and how bad it's been. It's amazing we had a guy that ran the team what 12, 13 years, right? Kevin, mm-hmm. was it? Uh, nine, you know what? Uh, you know, twelve a dozen years. That's a that's a long run in the NBA for anybody, and. Uh, but beyond that, we've had some characters, and I, I wrote about it today. I talked to you yesterday. You got the exact David Kahn quote out for me about the Beasley smoking the, too much marijuana. Uh, but they, uh, that's certainly the process for bringing in Tim Connolly from Denver seems to be a little more dynamic than the process for bringing in David Kahn was to ask David Stern. All right, I think we I think we lost Pat there. So let's. The we'll, wolves are scrambling. A Pat, we lost. If you can hear us in the in the green room there, Pat, we've we've lost your internet. So if you could, uh, I don't know, unplug and plug back in. But uh, yeah, he so Pat wrote the column for for the Star Tribune today, and he, and he just took fans through. The last, I think this is the seventh now true head of basketball operations without the interim tag since 1992 for the Timberwolves. And uh, boy, it's a list. It is a list. Uh, McCloskey, right? 1992 yep. through Jack 95. McCloskey, who, who almost got in a fist fight with Sid because he took uh, JR over Calvert Chaney. I believe the first one ever was supposed to be a guy who I think the strip ran a picture of today, Billy McKinney, who, if I'm not mistaken, quit before he started because he couldn't get along with Bob Stein. Like, Wait, there, so he didn't even, he never even... I don't think he said, I don't think he started. Like, that should have been the... There were a lot of, how can I put this nicely, warning signs. I there remember Billy McKinney wolves, as a kid. Like, oh, hiccups. Billy really McKinney hiccups. was the radio analyst when I was a kid. That's like, I, I didn't even know what Billy McKinney did before he was with yeah, Chad Hartman Billy, doing radio games. Yeah, I think Billy was going to be the... Uh, I think he was going to run the basketball ops, and then he and Bob Stein, the former golfer who ran the Wolves uh, to start with... Um, couldn't get along and so i think he quit yeah there were early signs that the wolves might be slightly dysfunctional yeah <laughs> which then came to fruition completely <laughs> there he is he's back Here, yeah how, I you, think, how you doing Joe? i think we got you back now okay all right yes uh, there were some early signs that uh well you know bill musselman god love him i i went all over the country writing pieces on him every time he ended up in some goofy location mobile alabama and tampa and all over because he was always worth the worth the price of admission but to think you're going to sit down and collaborate <laughs> with uh, the he did he that was one word that was not in bill's dictionary uh collaboration <laughs> and uh and then poor billy mckinney came in and kind of was thought that he was going to be running the thing and uh six seven weeks later they hired musselman and and all hell broke loose it was uh you know who was uh to some degree uh mckinney buddied up to dan barrero and he used to be kind of he used barrero as sounding board when he'd call up and complain about musselman <laughs> barrero's got some great stories about billy calling, <laughs> hey, you know what he did today you know <laughs> unbelievable so uh yeah and bob stein i talked to him yesterday he's very he, you know good humored about it but he said we didn't want to you know we were new to the nba we were taking the big plunge here financially when they did you know you see what an nba franchise is worth now but we didn't want to trust one guy to you know and 
and maybe be wrong. So uh, yeah. they, they 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 went with the, the kind of the Mike Lynn approach, right? That the uh, that the CEO would be in the room when they were making their decisions, and uh, that didn't didn't work out too good. You know, it's, it's, we're 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 doing some math uh, courtesy of Forbes yesterday because at, at first there's a little bit of sticker shock, right? Holy crap! They're, they're, the yeah. Timberwolves tax to pull Tim Connolly from the Nuggets, which is a, a, a good situation for him, is to double his current paycheck, right? That's the Timberwolves yeah. tax. We want you, we're gonna we're gonna double your paycheck. And so they're giving him forty million dollars over five years or whatever it is. And you think, wow, that's so he's one of the highest paid executives in all of basketball. But the Timberwolves as a franchise are worth one point five billion dollars, twenty eighth in the league. Yes. For all the reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Nuggets, one point seven billion. Jazz, one point eight billion. Suns, one point eight. Bucks are seventeenth. So I'm still in the bottom half of the league here. Yeah. One point nine billion. So if if he's as good as advertised, it can just bring five years of playoffs and stability, and maybe get to the Western Conference Finals like some of these other teams. The valuation and maybe a new arena at some point because of it. The valuation on your team can go up by a half billion dollars. Yeah. So when you look at it from that lens, it's really not that expensive to bring in you Tim feel that in the nba there i mean if you're a, if you got a screw up in the job you're in trouble okay but i'm not sure that this guy can come in and you know if if you if you don't get a good draft choice uh the the, the nba is based so much on picking in the top eight and being right <laughs> you know that uh uh i i'm i'm not sure that uh you know it's it, it'll be interesting he's got a good reputation but he's had his screw-ups too uh paying uh, what the, the porter guy that he paid an ungodly amount of money he got jokic and that made him a genius right because and they've, they've he's landed three or four role players mid first yeah. to mid second round which has helped i said th- but don't you think you're paying in part to avoid the big screw-up yes i'm sure you are yeah and uh it's the amount of money is uh you know, he gets a taste too, right? Uh, I don't think the equity is guaranteed. I think it, you know, something he's got to have some success, right? To get, get into the equity. I would think he's just, but uh, I, I think he's, you know, to give you confidence, they know what they're, what, what's going on. That's for sure. Uh, it, it is interesting. Uh, Lori and uh, Rodriguez, uh, A-Rod found this guy apparently and uh, got hot for him and, you know, they realize that if you're investing a one and a half billion, what difference is what difference does eight million make? But the bottom line all here, folks, is where are they gonna get the five or six hundred million cut of the new arena they want? You're not getting it from Hennepin County. Hennepin County did the twins deal. They're not doing it. They're not doing another eighth of a tax when all the people they, they all the problems they have now, uh, you know, with helping out everything that's going wrong, welfare wise and uh, everything else. You're not getting it from the city of Minneapolis. You're not getting it from the city. Where, where, what go, you're not getting it from this. What what government body is going to jump up and say yes? tear down that arena and build a new one. And by the way, you cannot help them finance a new arena that's not in exactly that location. Because you cannot create, you cannot spend all hundreds of millions of dollars of public money and create this big hole in downtown Minneapolis, which is already suffering terribly. What would Hennepin Avenue look like if you didn't have that building there a block away. Uh, so if, the, the 70s. if these guys think they're going to uh, build a, you know, a new arena somewhere in a more sprawling area, uh, the city can't help them and the head up and county can't help them and the state can't help them. So I don't know where they're going to get their money. What did that area look like? before the oh. target center was built because it was before target field obviously before target center in the 70s and 80s well there was a the target a field was an old abandoned parking lot yeah. basically that was never used and i can't even remember what was on what was where the 
the target, you know, target center has been there since 90. So I don't think there was much there, Pat, but on, but you know what, one block down there, there were all of those classic dive bars, Moby yes. Dicks and all, yes. and it was, uh, it was a different area. Like downtown wasn't nearly as sanitized as, as it became in, <laughs> in the nineties. It wasn't the same. Moby so, Dick was a classy joint though. Moby, Moby Dicks, the legend was, I think uh, if you came in with one of your uh, yes. pins, pins from AA, the they chips. give you a free drink. <laughs> yes. oh you you <laughs> exchanged your AA chip for a free drink. Yeah, you know, if you get Jesus. Like your, your Because you fell off the wagon, sobriety. you were helping them. You get your six month for a sobriety pin or your year long. You can trade it. And you go and they give you a free drink. So. <laughs> oh, my God. Awful. There was that place. There, there was a place called, I, I think it was called Rifle Sport. First Ave was mm-hmm. Uncle Sam's, mm-hmm. um, which, which, yes. which was the old bus, uh, the old bus depot from way back when. Like that mm-hmm. area was seedy, but it was actually had a lot of character. So, uh, the, and then uh, of course the famous Saddle Bar was there uh, earlier. The Saddle across the street, one of the first gentlemen's clubs in town, and uh, most of the girls <laughs> hadn't been working out. <laughs> it was. It was <laughs> Oh my god! Oh you would, you would. Uh, Pat, it's, it was it was a body positive gentleman's club, yes, a body positive was. gentleman's club. It was. Oh my god! It was. They've still and got those in Green Bay. Thing is, if you went in there to have a drink, you didn't even look at the dance. You know, you just you kind of had your back to the dancers. It was uh, the saddle was a. Uh, you know, it helped to be really overserved to go into the saddle. Oh god! Amazing. Yeah, it amazing. Was a, it was a. Uh, different uh, place to what are the what are the chances we could i think at some point here i don't know in the next two years aren't we going to get some of the native american casinos to say uh that they support sports betting in some form yeah what are the chances we could leverage whatever the the first iteration of legalized sports betting in minnesota is to siphon off a couple hundred million i think you hit it that's the that's probably the only way to do it to have a you know let's you're gonna it's funny they didn't they didn't get the bill passed down here. I mean, over in, Indi- in Wisconsin, they made a deal with the casinos and they got sports books. And but here we, uh, the casinos want all power, and we give we cede all power to the 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 Native American casinos. So they didn't once again. They they lose a legislative session and closing down without passing a gambling bill. So. Yeah, I guess you have to play footsie with them. You can't just build a casino downtown, but that would probably be the way. The way sports teams have now, leagues have now leaped in with gambling, there's no problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could attach it to the casino. You could have a casino downtown and attach it, right? Well, no, you you can have them now in in the stadium arena yeah. and bet during the games. So like See, that's, that's, that's the new thing. That's my fear that they try to build their arena, you know, next to a casino out in the boondocks and leave downtown Minneapolis. Absolutely. Yep. Screwed to with, with one think of a better word. So. I think you're exactly right, Pat. I think that's exactly the plan. If, if they have, have to, cause you, this guy's talked about building his own city, right? So yes. I don't think he's going to say, "Well, I'm confined to downtown," or "I or oh, or God, we're screwed." No. He's going to say, the "What Tolosa, can we do?" The Tolosa Timberwolves. Let's get and it. the other and thing. You know what the buyout parking. is? You know what the buyout is? At least fifty million. Yeah. Expiring million. when? Uh whatever does it make? <laughs> he said, "You know, they can. They'll just write the check." I, I, I think got, I got you. Run for quite a while. Fifty million is not. That isn't too much when you're uh, when you're. Uh, and you know when you're paying 1.5 billion, which seems outrageous, but by the time, by the time they get the whole thing paid off, that'll be the bottom rung for NBA franchises. It's, yeah. uh, yep. it's amazing. I just still predict my, my I'm I, I'm on board with Cat playing 50 games still, right? That's my prediction. With yeah, we got 30. you on the record. Yeah. Now maybe you get the maybe they they get they get this now he can get the supermax because he made the third team. I'll be, I'll, so maybe if you get the super max, you'll be uh, motivated to not uh, feel bad, have bad knees and bad shoulders and bad everything else that's got stem cell in him. So that I super max don't. starts at forty seven or forty eight million dollars in two thousand twenty four, all the way up to like fifty eight million. Of course, the cap's going to go up too quite a bit. 
But I wonder man. if uh, I wonder if he'll still be as sensitive at that number. If you're making fifty. Oh yeah. Yeah. What really, do you care what people think do anymore? You really care if somebody says anything about you anymore? <laughs> I mean, come on. He'll you, care. He'll in other words, care. one year of cat is going to be the same as your buyout to leave targets. Yeah. So, uh, that's, yeah. Exactly. So that's amazing. Please welcome the well, Eagan Timberwolves. As, as we celebrate these guys, uh, yeah, I think. Well, the nice thing is, yeah, they could build it out there next to Ziggy, and they. And, you know, get a construction crew that you don't have to pay the help. That would be pretty damn good, too. Like, yeah. uh, you know, Ziggy's people out there, where they, uh, where they, uh, they work the 80 hours an interesting a week. interesting implication. They work the 80, 90 hours a week and give you a check for 40. That, that keeps costs down pretty good. You know? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Ziggy plan on, on paying help, that would uh, be good. Maybe Ziggy can put the first shovel in the dirt with his uh, with his with little Mark, construction Mark helping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite photo, I keep that one. Ziggy looking like the evil guy in Dayton, looking a little silly himself. Yeah. Or cut like Austin head. Powers. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Pat, before we say Where goodbye. Where do they play, we, we... by the way, uh, if they tear down Target Center and are building a new one? Do they play in the... Uh, They'll probably play in the, the X, right? Yeah, They'll play yeah. In the they X. might play in the Ziggy Dome. Oh. You know, they played in the Metrodome. You know what? I if they leave downtown, my guess is it's going to be so fractured between the two sides. They'll go to St. Paul for a couple of years or a year. Yeah, they could. Maybe. They probably. I don't think downtown would be like. Yeah, just put them in. The you know, they should put them in the barn. Put them on the raised floor. Put them in the barn for a couple oh, of years. God, cat would fall <laughs> off. You'd be out for eight years. Can you imagine, well, Anthony build, Edwards? Here, here's the other plan. I I don't want to keep going on here, but if you build this great arena, you move the Gophers to that too. Get rid of that dump. That's Judd's prediction officially. I'm going to write that down. Is that okay. the new Timberwolves yeah, arena? But if they move out to like Egan oh, or something. No, it like... has to be down. It has to be a mile from camp, two miles. Oh, well, from then, camp. yeah. Yeah, I probably. Mean, like the Yum Center in Louisville, where the yes. Louisville team plays. You know, yeah, Marquette have... plays at the Bradley, whatever it's called now. Yeah. 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 Not Pfizer Forum. Wood. Pfizer Forum. Pfizer Forum, yeah. Which is right. very nice. Pat, we, yeah. should, uh, we, we should celebrate a great achievement last night. A starting pitcher went seven innings for the Minnesota right. Twins. Boy, Sonny oh. Gray shoving for seven and strong he, last he, night, and he uh, he would have went eight, but he would have had a Russell Rocco if he tried to, because he was <laughs> just cruising, absolutely cruising. And uh, they now Dick, Dick, Dick came up with this stat last night. I was listening at the end. They've won six games this year with two runs or less. Last year they won four all season. Wow. Yeah. Six six wins with two or less, which is good. They're not a very good hitting team. They're not a very good hitting. Well, the, but they they are relative to the league. That's they right. have they have That's like right. the fifth most runs per game or something. Because the league, we're we're back is, to the mid sixties offensively here. Two forty is hey, we're hitting two forty. Let's go here. It's great, you know. So yeah, that's right. But. Uh, you said Buxton's in the lineup today, huh? So All right, that's my theory is not going to play. They know it's going to be a rain out. It's an it's a what is it a noon game, 12-10 first pitch. Yeah. yeah and yeah. they have they have put out a fake lineup card to show everyone, "Hey, by, bless him, Byron Buxton's in the lineup today." The plan is where Let's oh, get it. Uh, if if I start on the campaign to play Celestino every day and bench, bench the 2 111 hitting Buxton, is the Twitter audience going to Take that hook and just swallow that. You should. Break. Can you please tweet that immediately oh, after we're yeah. done here? Well, you. Well, I did tweet. You a started last days night. Ago. Huh? Oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I thought that you started that I campaign start, like last night. Started yesterday, yeah. but I can't now. Now I got to offer it in a more serious tone to see if I can get. When did he start wearing? Someone zoomed in last night on a screenshot. He had a wrist wrap on. I think it was his right wrist. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know. He had a, he had a, it was Buxton? a, it was like one of those that wraps around your thumb kind of coming out from his undershirt. Mm. Does he, is that part of the reason why he hasn't, he's got I like two know. hits he's in the gotta last get week. The uniform. He got to get the, he got to get the stay puff uniform that we saw at the end of, uh, <laughs> saw at the end of uh, Ghostbusters, don't we? Uh, yeah. Just, just, just roll him down to first base. Just like <laughs> get him going. Come on, Come on Byron. Come on. <laughs> we'll get you going. <laughs> You can do it, Byron. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to argue. They everybody in the division. The Whiteys last night gave up sixteen runs. The uh, I think everybody else got beat right last night. Or Kansas City might have won, but uh, they're well, this five and a half. This game division, lead. which is 
This division, oh. which is supposed to be must improved, is terrible. So Detroit, I thought Detroit would be competitive now with Hinch and you know some of the changes. No, nah, they're not. They no. have they good enough players. They're, no, they're no they don't. They're awful. They stink. They might as well just write down seventeen thousand every night, though. That's it. They don't draw it. Seventeen thousand is their limit. So right now, so I don't yeah. They, well, they they got to they got to earn it back. You haven't yeah. won a playoff game since 2004. You don't just get to start hot for a month and a half and pack the house again. Pat, I had to go to the I had to go to Monday's game by myself because the <laughs> six people I asked to go all said no. I'm okay. I'm I joined good. you for th- like and two Judd, innings. And Judd, out of necessity, came down from the press box and had a well, And you bought me a beer for the hell. When I, I was dividing up our Legends Club's tickets, and I'd had 20 games, and everybody else had 20 games. And by about 2014, I was walking up and down the neighborhood, knocking on people's door, asking what they wanted four tickets for the game that was in four hours. They're like, oh, my God, and who's that guy? Yeah. Don't answer the door. The door slammed in my face. I said, I can't get out. Just put them, put them under man. people's uh, windshield wipers, you know, yes, like right. promo cards. <laughs> okay. All right. We got to go. All right. We'll see you, see you tomorrow, Pat. <laughs> see you, Royce. All right. That's uh, Wrapping with Royce. He presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. They've been supporters of the Timberwolves for a number of years. Proud supporters now. Some years, maybe it's, you know, it's like we're supporters, but now we're proud supporters. Woodbury's nice, I hear. They love they love their Stop. basketball. No, keep they it. It, it needs to be downtown Woodbury. Minneapolis. Keep uh, it downtown. Uh, I have property, I'll sell them. Right? Federated Insurance is all about helping you maximize the success of your business. You can find out more about the great people, tools, and resources they provide at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours.